my name is Michelle Fiore. I am a tattoo artist and a painter and I wanted to create this tutorial as an example of how I go about my painting process, show different tips and tricks and techniques that I use and how I approach painting. Um, I wanted to use like an actual photo reference versus one of my original like concepts or designs because I know it's like kind of hard to break things down and have people digest it because everybody, especially myself, has a super short attention span these days so I wanted to make it as easy as possible for anybody who is currently a painter and looking to pick up some more like techniques or tricks or tips or anybody who's starting to paint. For the image I chose uh, Michael Langdon from American Horror Story because I thought the character was fucking awesome and super evil and I think that Cody Fern did a really awesome job. I'm gonna include all of the supplies that I use and try to include a, a brief description of my actual process as well. So hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you for watching. All right, first and foremost, you're gonna find an image or a sketch to transfer onto a surface. Surface is either gonna be canvas, canvas board, wooden board, or illustration board, since we're using acrylic paint here. Regardless of what surface, I always prep it with gesso beforehand. With any type of paint, it's going to absorb into the surface for the first few layers. This can warp the surface if you intend on using a lot of thin layers, which is what I do. I'll typically prep my surfaces with a minimum of at least two coats of gesso. Usually canvases don't need as much, but for illustration board it's important to do five layers on the front and five layers on the back. Wooden boards require around the same amount because of the wood grain. The best way to create a smooth surface is using sandpaper to sand down every couple of layers or so. Transferring the image. To transfer an image, Serral paper is a great way to transfer a graphite image onto the surface. You can usually take your initial image and trace the detail onto tracing paper as to not compromise your original reference. You could also do this digitally. To save time, costs, and supplies, I've recently started to digitally project my reference images. That way I can either directly project a photograph or drawing onto my surface and then mark it with a pencil that way. I've created my tracing on the iPad and projected the broken up detail. The benefit of tracing versus projecting straight onto the surface is your muscle memory of the forms once you switch to the paintbrushes. Drawing with brushes and blocking in tones. Now that you're starting to paint, you need the right tools. To block in tones, it's great to get flat brushes in large, medium, and small sizes. Here's a tip. You want to think of painting as a spiral. You ultimately start off covering as much of the canvas as possible until you're working on smaller and smaller sections into detail. This makes it a lot less overwhelming as painting is a super time consuming activity. Most of my larger detailed pieces with narrative take me about 40 hours to do and that's not counting the sketching or preliminary work. The tighter into the spiral you go, the smaller the brushes. Flats are helpful because you can get a wide stroke for a lot of coverage and thin brush strokes as well when riding the narrow edge. This is good when mapping or drawing out edges as you'll see in the beginning of the video. In addition to flats, I also keep filberts. They are my favorite because they are so versatile and really great for dry brushing, which is how I blend a lot of my colors. I keep them in varying sizes too. I usually keep a small and large round as they are usually the best for thick layers of paint. Liner brushes. I'm always buying liner brushes and detail brushes. Liners are best when you're trying to create a consistent long line. Fan brushes. Usually medium for textures or to blend wet glazes together. I use it sparingly. There's also brights. They're similar to flats but with shorter bristles. These are great for highlights and I usually get them in smaller sizes for detail. Now to get into some more technical terminology. Blocking in tones. Fat over lean is a common phrase used in the painting realm. The idea is that you slowly build up how thick your paint is. When I'm blocking in tones, I start with very watered down glazes. I usually soak the brush in water and allow the excess water to get taken off of the paper towel. Then I'll dip into the paint itself. Something similar to water is matte medium. It's a transparent liquid that increases the fluidity and reduces sheen in your acrylic paint. Acrylic paint is essentially liquid plastic, so when it dries, it's a bit shiny. This reduces that a little bit, but its main purpose for me is glazing. I make glazes with water as well, but when I want richer, easier to control pigment, I use a bit of matte medium. 
I used a fair amount of it for the background here. And in the beginning, you can kind of notice the chalky appearance. That will change when I seal the painting once finished with my finishing medium of choice, which is crystal clear fixative. Identifying tones. Understanding the color wheel is important. All colors are either warm or cool depending on where they fall on the wheel. Orange is considered the warmest and blue is considered the coolest. Warm colors advance the eye or draw it forward while cool colors reduce or draw less attention. Colors and shadows are cooler colors and direct lighting tend to be warmer. Objects facing the light source will be warmer than those facing away. After looking at my reference photo, you can see the majority of it is warm. This helps me identify what colors I will be using for it. For this painting, the colors that I'm using are burnt umber, cadmium red, yellow, unbleached titanium, black, white, and phthalo blue. Getting more into color, here's some definitions for you. You, when we refer to color, is the pure color itself. A tint is a U mixed with white. A tone is a U mixed with gray. And a shade is a U mixed with black. When we speak about value, it's how dark or light a color appears to be. Saturation is how intense or dull a color is based off of its main U. Complementary colors are opposing colors on the color wheel. They provide contrast. This photo has an analogous color scheme. Any three colors on the wheel, along with all of its tints, tones, and shades, is analogous. I chose this scheme because it's the easiest to explain without diving too deep into color theory, which I can talk about forever. Versailles painting focuses on laying out values over tones, so you can ultimately create an entire black and white painting. For these purposes, we are focusing on tones as we can build up the shades and tints as we move around the canvas and get into further details. Tones give us a great middle ground and allow us to see how much darker or lighter we have to move in value. Moving into detail. As you're blocking in your tones, spiraling into each section to move into tighter detail, you'll use smaller brushes the more inward you go. Since we are using a photo as a reference and have something to compare it to, you can check back and forth to see if your mark making matches up. Comparing to reference. When comparing your painting to reference, you can do so by eye, by looking back and forth or flipping the canvas and reference upside down. This is a fun brain hack to get your eyes to perceive the shapes and the images differently. This aids in recognizing things you may not normally have. Another technique is a mirror or mirroring. Similar to the upside down trick, viewing images through a mirror alters your perspective because you were using the opposite side of your brain than when you were creating art with your dominant hand. It's actually pretty cool. You could also, you know, do the standard stepping back, squinting your eyes or classic ways to get a fresh perspective. Also, you can actually do it digitally by having a photo of both next to each other so you're able to zoom in to different spots and really gauge the difference, which you'll actually see later in the video. Finishing and varnishing. Once you've finished your piece, you'll want to use some type of medium to protect it from the elements. Crystal Clear Fixative is my go-to for acrylic, but there are many other types of sprays and liquid varnishes that you can use to complete your piece. Here's a comparison for the reference against the actual painting, and here is our final product. Thank you for watching.